<laughs> Welcome back to Twisted Metal, or should I say Twister Metal? We're playing as Twister this time. It's the F1 racer that is somehow too colorful, even for this game. And it's driven by Amanda Watts. She is a speed junkie who wants to go faster than the speed of light. Doesn't take Einstein to tell you that's a terrible idea. But it's what she's going for. We're gonna drive a ridiculously fast vehicle to try and accomplish that goal. Not quite light speed, but uh, as close as you can get in this game. And we're taking this thing out for a casual stroll across the South Pole. Guess the North Pole has too much traffic on Christmas Eve. Although not for Twisted Metal 3, the North Pole is a level in the next game, which I will not be playing. Doesn't matter now, we're in Antarctica. On an iceberg. Happen to start off on a little elevated area. It's very easy to get to, but the enemy vehicles just don't like going up there, so it's a nice safe place to scope things out right at the beginning of the level, which is especially hectic with seven enemies. These little towers are our only real breakable here, but it's not the only thing that will be destroyed in this level, that's for sure. So when we set foot on that part of the glacier, it starts to flash a little strobe effect on the ground, which you will hopefully intuit means get the hell off of that part of the glacier because it's about to collapse into the ocean. If you go with it, you die and the level is permanently reduced in size. This is sort of a gimmick level, and coincidentally, our car has sort of a gimmick special. It's clearly Twister's namesake. It somehow spins around on one of its corners and creates a little Twister. You can use that to suck enemies up. It's rated four stars out of five, but the damage potential isn't really that high compared to other four and five star specials. And even ignoring the damage, it's got a lot of weird properties that make it only situationally useful at best. Plus we are capped at only carrying as many as three at a time. So a lot of them go to waste while you're waiting for the right situation to use them. I burned through most of my health pool playing with that special. So I had to go for the full health refill of the level which is really hard to get to, and it costs you a little bit of health when you slam into the icicle on the other side, which as far as I know is unavoidable. Got most of my health back now though, so dump my payload of ricochets into this chasm, where they'll be hardest to avoid, and then start trying to get rid of this special. But the other property of the special is that while you are swinging enemies around, your car will frequently bump into theirs and the constant micro collisions will deal you a bunch of damage. So I should use the shield before using my special as I did with Grasshopper. But I have a better use for the energy bar. That is using minion special instead of my own. It's the only energy attack in the game that requires using the machine gun as part of the inputs. So you would never discover it accidentally, and it's certainly not listed in the uh, instruction manual. But when you do learn how to use it, it allows you to trade about 90% of your energy bar for a single use of Minion Special. When you're a car like this that occasionally just needs the ability to punch another car in the face, it's worth the trade, I think. But it does mean that I will very rarely be using the shield in a low armor vehicle with a special that hurts itself. The way I play Twister, she dies real fast. But you can't argue with the results. Minion special is doing a lot of work. And it fires from like a very centralized location when you use it as a small vehicle instead of minion. So usually all four missiles, including the freeze shot, all hit their target. 
gives me max damage every time and a chance to either follow up with more attacks or run away as the situation demands. I could theoretically free someone on a part of the glacier that's about to collapse, kill them that way, but uh, I certainly don't pull it off in this video, nor did I pull it off in any of my practice attempts. I was going for the full life refill there, hasn't respawned yet, and that part of the glacier is gone. So no more max health refill. There's a lot of health pickups scattered around, but at any time any of them could just fall into the drink and disappear forever. Luckily I still am able to get the most difficult one to collect. Not only is it hard to get up to that specific spot, but also uh, this vehicle is too short to actually grab it if you drive underneath the pickup. And it didn't end up helping me, but it could have helped me quite a bit. Is that broken ramp, if you get up there and just stop, you can wait there while the rest of the level falls apart and the enemies can't get up to you. Most of them will die from plummeting into the ocean. It's one of the many ways you can get a cheap, easy, boring win. Now right now, Warthog is stuck on Mr. Grimm's corpse. Just can't get around that little dead motorcycle. Made it easy to help him join the Grim Reaper in death. The combined enemy health is still way higher than mine though. And I don't have too much I can do about it. My energy bar is still refilling, so I'm gonna have to rely on my own special. Which worked out surprisingly well. You can use it to ram enemy cars into nearby walls if you stand next to them. It increases the odds that the vehicle will also bump into your car, but it dramatically increases the damage that they take from your special. And you can also grab multiple enemies in your special. That has pretty impressive results. That of course requires the compliance of multiple enemies. And when you do kill someone with this special, it keeps twisting the husk of their vehicle for additional damage to yourself. The last remnant of Sweet Tooth's final napalm cone finally expired, which leaves just one enemy, each of us with a tiny little bit of health left, as the level continues to fall apart. Outlaw was hiding in that little crevice, so I completely wasted my minion special. But we are both scared of one another. We fled in opposite directions, and Outlaw happened to flee off the edge of the level. Which netted me a very narrow victory. As the level continues to collapse around me. Obviously I will be joining my deceased foes very soon, but for now... A win's a win. Let's go break the laws of physics by traveling faster than the speed of light. Amanda Watts raced across the rooftops of New York on her way to meet me, the one person who could make her ultimate dream come true. I need more speed, she told me. I want to go faster than anyone ever has, as my prize give me the ability to drive at the speed of light. With a wave of my arms, I called upon my powers and granted Amanda Watt her ultimate wish. Moving faster than any person or object ever had, she broke through the barrier and found herself traveling through time. Hey, what time are you in? Where is Amanda Watts, the world's first time traveler, had gotten her wish. She was on top of the world. But no one stays on top forever. <laughs> Millions of years later, the only trace of Amanda Watts and her twisted metal victory would be the fossilized helmet on display in the National Museum of History. To the world of science, a helmet so old became an issue of worldwide debate, a great mystery. 
But to me, it was simply a cruel reminder of a woman obsessed with pushing the limits. I am Calypso, and I thank you for playing Twisted Metal. It took a whole lot more than 88 miles an hour, but Amanda got to see all of history. It's gotta be the most high concept ending in the series so far. Way more involved than the time travel ending in the first game. But they managed to do it justice. I'm satisfied at least. So, now we get to turn from one of my favorite endings to one of my least favorite. Warthog consistently manages to bore me to tears in every Twisted Metal game. In the first game, he wished for the evidence that proves aliens exist, so that he could destroy it. Yep, he's that boring. Doesn't end up mattering though, because the aliens don't come back until Twisted Metal 3, which, again, not Let's Playing that one. In this game, the driver is Captain Rogers, such a boring character that even the instruction manual accidentally calls him Captain Rob Burtz, mistakenly giving him the surname of the driver of Outlaw. But whatever his name is, he's over a hundred years old and he wants to have the body of a 20 year old. How could anyone possibly twist the wording of that into something horrible? You'll just have to click the link to find out.